Hello, I'm Lucy Gunawan, Head of Data Science at Timmy. Today, we're diving into the calculation box within Anatella, a versatile and essential tool for data transformation. This session is about getting to know the calculator box and string manipulations. Today's session will focus on two main areas. First, exploring the calculation box. Second, manipulating the string data. Let's start with understanding the calculator box. So what is a calculator box? A calculator box is a tool designed to add new columns or update existing column by using the values from existing column. It's a powerful way to enrich and expand your dataset. These new columns can be derived from logic, predefined business rules, or incorporate values from other data points to compute new information. Calculations are performed row by row, ensuring that the new value in row X is based on values from the same row X. Inside other tools, the action of creating a new column inside a table is sometimes referred as creating a calculated field. The calculated field in data visualization tools like Tableau or Click slow down the system to do the real-time computations. This is especially feasible when you use like five or six of them. In contrast to these tools, the calculator box in Anatella is much more efficient and optimized, thus greatly improving performance. This is because there is no need to keep recomputing calculations, and most of the time it stores new columns directly on disk. This approach allows Anatella to manage tables with more than 30,000 columns efficiently, making it highly suitable for extensive natural language processing, text mining, and advanced machine learning tasks. Whereas most data tools falter beyond 300 columns, Anatella is engineered to handle large-scale dataset with ease, offering a robust solution for complex machine learning challenges. Let's create a new column. I have an example of sales transaction data here. Let's use the calculator box in Anatella to calculate the total price. It's simple. Just drag and drop the calculator box into your workflow. Now, let's break down the essential components of a calculator box in Anatella. First up, we have input variables. These are the data fields or columns from your dataset that you'll be using in your calculation. For example, let's select the quantity of item purchase and price as our input variables. Notice how you can rename these input variables to make them more concise. For instance, we can abbreviate the long name quantity of item purchase to X while keeping the name of the price variables unchanged. The next step involves specifying the name for the new column that we're adding to the table. It's crucial to choose a name that is both one, unique, and second, meaningful. Here you should give it a little bit of thought because the column name is how you refer to this column later on throughout the boxes down the flow. It is very important to select a meaningful column name. Why? That's because it will greatly simplify the maintenance of your grub in the future. You might think that using comments is sufficient to answer a good maintenance of your graph, but many times we cannot rely on the comments inside the graphs because these comments are outdated and out of sync. They do not represent it anymore what's currently going on in the latest revision of the graph. Often, the only way to understand what's going on is to look at the column's names, because that is typically the only piece of information that is truly reliable. To help you to maintain your code, Anatella offers you two unique functionalities. One, 
In Anatella, there is no limitation on the column names. In this way, you can use very long and meaningful column names. Two, in Anatella, even when you have a very long column name, you can still define and use an abbreviated name inside the calculator box. Thanks to this abbreviation mechanism, you don't have to compromise on the length of the column names. In this example, let's name our new column total price. Then we address the computation mode. This selection decides whether your calculation will create a new column or update an existing one. We'll opt to create a new column. Method type defines the data type of your new column, whether it's a floating point, key, or a string. Since it's in fourth price, let's classify it as a floating point. The mathematical expression box is where the magic happens. In other tools like Excel, these mathematical expressions are sometimes referred to as formulas. To write these mathematical expressions, we will use many different components such as various operators and different functions. In our example, let's use x multiplied by price. Inside this mathematical expression, you can also directly use global parameters within your calculation. Finally, there is an optional note section for any explanation or comments about these new columns. Let's run the calculator box now to see the results. Now, let's continue with more examples to make this all very clear. Let's start with manipulating string data. To simplify the learning process, we've created an Anatella example that allows you to follow this tutorial step by step. Right click on the calculator box and choose the first example, one, string, search and extract. Let's dive into what a string is. Essentially, a string is a sequence of characters arranged in a specific order. Take the palindrome, Madam in Eden, I'm Adam. The string is composed of 24 characters. Now let's add an index to understand its structure better. An index serves as a numerical guide, marking the position of each character in the string. In Anatella, indexing begins at zero. So the first character, M, is at index 0, the second A is at index 1, and so on, up to the last character, which is at index 23. This is actually the string's length minus 1. Indexes allows us to pinpoint exact character position inside a string. Let's try to find a comma's position in our palindrome using the index of function. Here is the syntax. The index of function requires two parameters, the main string, which is the palindrome, and the substring we're searching for, in this case, a comma. Implementing this in Anatella is straightforward. Let's begin by creating an input table. The name of the column is palindrome, and fill it with the palindrome, Madam in Eden, I'm Adam. We'll then add the calculator box, and let's set the palindrome as our input variable. It's crucial to uncheck the cast to number checkbox because we aim to use the column palindrome as a string in our mathematical expression. This step is crucial for treating the column as a string. It's commonly missed by new Anatella users, leading to an error. If you have the error, clicking the check button will show this error message. Value is of the I type, impossible to convert to the S type, indicating the need to treat the column as a string, S type, rather than integer I type. Now let's create a new column named index comma. I'll choose floating point as the meta type for our result. For the formula, 
will use the index of function. Instead of typing manually yourself, palindrome as the name of the input variable, you can use the a handy right click trick to quickly add it, followed by the comma, and close a double quotes, then close the bracket. Let's validate our syntax. Click the check button here. If the formula isn't highlighted in red, it's valid. Although adding notes is optional, they can be quite useful for documentation purposes. Executing the box, we find the comma is indeed at index 5, exactly as expected. Similarly, last index of help us find the last occurrence of a specific substring. Let's add a new column name, index last comma, using this function. After execution, this accurately locates the last comma at index 14. It's worth noticing if a character isn't present, index of and last index of return minus 1. So, utilizing index of and last index of is useful for pinpointing exact position within a string. Next, we'll explore how to extract specific segments. When working with strings, extracting specific segments is a very common need, especially when dealing with structured data. We can accomplish this using the left, right, and substring function in Alnatella. Let's explore this concept with a practical example. Imagine we're handling a series of error log files stored in a directory. Our objective here is threefold. First, we aim to extract the timestamp from each log file's name. Second, identify the directory it's stored in. And third, isolate the log file name itself. Let's start with extracting the timestamp of the log file. To extract the timestamp, we use the substring function. Here is the syntax. We extract a substring of a string starting at start index to end index. The timestamp starts at index 34 and ends at index 49. Therefore, our formula is get a substring from a file path from index 34 to index 49. Log files usually have consistent file names since they're generated automatically, allowing us to use the index directly. Let's extract the timestamp from this file name. First, we specify the input file name, which is file path. Uncheck the class to the number checkbox for the file path, then create a new column called timestamp. And meta type is string or unknown. In the formula box, we input our formula substring file path from 36 to 49. Upon execution, we correctly extract the timestamp from the file path. Directly using indexes can be limiting. There is a more a dynamic method available. As you can see, the timestamp is located right after the last underscore and ends at the dot, which is the last dot in the file path. By using the last index of function, we can make the extraction more dynamic. Remember our syntax of the last index of. Here it is. So the value of the column start index will be the last index of underscore in the file path plus one, as the underscore is in location 33 and we need to start right after that. The n index is the last index of the dot in the file path. Our initial formula, substring, file path 34 to 49 will not be dynamically replaced with the new start index and end index formulas. Let's copy them. Upon execution, we achieve the same result. 
This dynamic method is preferable, especially in cases where the server number might change affecting the exact index. A quick pause. Liking this video helps us a lot. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now is great time. You won't miss out on more tutorial like this. Ready to keep going? Let's jump back in. To extract the directory name, we use the left function. The syntax is which retrieve the first x character of a string. In our case, the formula will be left with parameter file path and directory length. We know that the directory names ends at index 14. Thus, the directory length will be 14 plus 1, which is 15. Thus, our formula is retrieve the first 15 characters of file path. However, as we've learned a better way to determine the directory length dynamically, we should replace the fixed index with a calculation that finds the last location of the forward slash plus 1. We create a new column called directory, change the method type to string, and use this formula. This method accurately extract the directory name. To extract the file name from the file path, we use the write function, where x is the number of characters to be extracted from the right of the string. Given the file path length is 53 and the directory length is 15, the file name length should be 38. Therefore, we use retrieve the last 38 characters from the file path. Let's try this out. We'll make a new variable called file name, change the method type to string, and paste our formula. This gives us the correct file name. If we want to approach this dynamically, we can calculate the length of the file path and subtract the directory length. However, the simplest method to obtain the file name from a directory path is to use the substring function. Setting the start index one position beyond the last occurrence of the forward slash character. We set a high end index like 99999 to ensure we capture the entire file name. Thus, the formula becomes. Let's replace our formula. Since Anatella automatically trims the trailing spaces, this formula yields the correct file name with this single quick calculation. String modification plays a crucial role in data cleaning and transformation, especially when dealing with messy or inconsistent data. Let's study the concatenation and case change function in Anatella. To follow along this example, right-click on the calculator box and choose Second String Validation and Modifications. Concatenation is a fundamental aspect of data transformation. It's the process of joining two strings together. In Anatella, we use the double forward slash as the operator for concatenation. Consider this example. We have a table with ID, first name, and last name. Our goal is to combine the first name and last name into a full name, separated by a space. To do this, we'll create a new column named full name and set its meta type to string. It's important to ensure that the cast to number checkbox is unchecked for these two columns that contain strings. The formula for concatenation will be first name followed by a double forward slash for concatenation and then space in quotes to answer name or property space, another double forward slash and ending with last name. Let's see how it looks. And there we have it, the full name field perfectly combining first and last name with a space. Now let's tackle a different scenario for shipping label where we want the first name initial followed by the last name in uppercase. We'll create another variable called customer name, also with meta type of string. 
To isolate the first letter of the first name, we use the left function, like so. Left, the first name, only one character. Then we concatenate this with a dot and a space, and follow it with the last name converted to uppercase using the two upper functions. The formula becomes... Executing this, we see our customer name variable correctly formatted with the first name initial and an uppercase last name. In various business and data processing scenarios, there is frequently a need to format numerical identifiers like invoice numbers into strings of a consistent fixed length, complete with the leading zeros. Let's consider a case where an invoice number needs to be formatted as a string of exactly three characters. Given that the original invoice number might vary in length, one, two, or three digits, we aim to standardize this format by adding zeros in front of the numbers. If the invoice number is in numerical format, we first convert the numerical invoice number into a string using the i to a function. This conversion is important as it transforms our numeric identifier into a string format, allowing for string operations. The name of the function i to a stands for integer to ASCII. It's i to a. ASCII is just another name for string. Next, we prepend the converted string with triple zero to ensure we have a sufficient number of leading zero. This step is executed with the concatenation operator, double forward slash, like so. This operation appends enough zero in front of our invoice number to potentially exceed our desired length. The final step is to remove the excess zero characters. We do this with the right function. This function keeps the last three characters of our string, effectively presenting us with the invoice number in the required three character length with the necessary leading zeros. If the invoice number column is already declared as a string, indicated by unchecked checkbox in the left string of the calculator box, the i to a function became unnecessary and we simply use the right without the i to a function. There you have it, a comprehensive demonstration of the calculator box. In this tutorial, you've learned about the most common function for manipulating string and numeric data, along with other useful functions. There are two more videos for the calculator box. Consider calculator box numerical data and useful operators and calculator box date manipulation. Thank you for joining me in this tutorial. If you have any question or need further clarification on any of the step topic covered today, feel free to leave your comments down below. We highly value your feedback. And if you found this video helpful, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up. Your support truly means a lot to us. If you are interested in more tutorial, engaging discussion, and useful tips, please consider subscribing to our channel. By doing so, you'll stay informed and won't miss out on our upcoming content. See you next time!